Now, South Africa is facing a dire shortage of veterinary professionals. Only one tertiary institution in the country offers training. The South African Veterinary Council says many South Africans do not have access to veterinary care for their livestock, especially in the rural areas. On this year's World Veterinary Day, we talked to Deputy Dean in the Faculty of Veterinary Science in the University of Pretoria, Professor Ditmar Holm, about some challenges in this field. Now, Professor, thank you so much for your time and thank you for joining us. The work of vets entails helping sick animals, but also educating people on matters such as sterilization and prevention. The international norm is between 200 and 400 veterinarians per million of the population, yet currently there's only about 60 to 70 veterinarians per million in South Africa. What do you attribute to this shortage to? Good afternoon and thanks for having me. Um, I think it's important maybe to put this into context as well um, in terms of um, the history and also what South Africa can afford to have in terms of veterinarians. Um, so although the international norm is quite a bit higher than what we have in South Africa, um, that norm obviously comes from countries that are more resourced and that can afford more veterinary services, generally speaking. Um, in South Africa, we've made major advances, um, in particular with the implementation of the Compulsory Community Service Program, the CCS program for veterinarians that was implemented in 2016, which really brings veterinary services to local communities, especially in, in rural areas where they don't normally have access to, to veterinarians. So that has really made a big difference in South Africa. Um, in terms of, of shortages, otherwise, it's, um, it's interesting to note that uh, the veterinary profession uh, used to be listed as a scarce skill in South Africa until the end of last year, but it's no longer listed as a scarce skill. Um, so that makes one wonder as well, you know, should it be listed as a scarce skill or not? Maybe that's something that should be revisited. So with this, Prof, how do you think we then should address this issue? Is there even a need for us to address the issue of, of veterinarians being a shortage in the country since it's no longer listed as a scarce skill? I think we need to look at it scientifically. Um, I think, unfortunately, we don't have very good data in South Africa on employment of veterinarians and migration of veterinarians um, within the country and also in and out of the country. Um, we simply don't have good information on that at the moment. So there's a, there is a dire need for us to investigate the mat matter better so that we have scientific evidence and that we can base decisions on that. Recently, the delisting of um, a veterinarian as a scarce skill, um, as the university, we were not involved in that process, so we don't really have information on how that decision was made. But generally speaking, how that works is that the government department that's responsible will look at vacancies without, within their system. So in our case for veterinarians, that's the Department of Agriculture and uh, Land Reform and Rural Development, or DELRIT. And if they don't see as many vacancies as they used to see, they will then declare that it is no longer a uh, scarce skill, or they will recommend to the Department of Home Affairs, rather, mm. who obviously is in, in control. Um, but I think the, the, the need for us in South Africa is to investigate the matter further, because we do hear from the university's point of view um, that there, is a, there seems to be a shortage of veterinarians, um, especially in the private industry, um, and we need to respond to that, and we need better information. Most certainly, Prof. And South Africa has many areas in the country which uh, are poverty-stricken. Unfortunately, in many of these cases, the animals in those areas also suffer too. Do we see a culture, particularly in those areas, of ensuring that our animals get checked and are taken care of medically? Yes, that's quite a, a challenge for us in South Africa. And um, the compulsory community service program was really intended to address that to quite an extent, and I think to quite a large extent that has been successful. Um, what we still need to work on is to create awareness of the veterinary profession in, in those communities. Historically, these communities have not had veterinary services available, so often um, the people in the communities are not aware of what a veterinarian is and the role of a veterinarian in a community. 
and there is a lot of work for us to do there. And that must be an industry approach. So that, that must be driven by us as the university responsible for the training, but also other stakeholders, for, for example, the Vietnamese Council and the Vietnamese Association and also the Department of Agriculture. Mm. So with that, Prof, do you then believe that the, co the collaboration between public and private veterinary service sectors could possibly assist with those rural areas and the problems that they face in terms of accessibility? Yes, absolutely. Um, there's been a recommendation from the OIE, which is the equivalent of the World Health Organization, but for veterinarians, um, for South Africa to invest more in public um, and private partnerships, so-called PPPs. And that's been on the agenda for a long time, but we're still waiting to see that implemented properly, uh, which is quite unfortunate. And in my in my opinion, that was uh, one of the problems resulting in the current situation that we have with foot and mouth disease, for instance, which is really a crisis in South Africa at the moment. Mm. Lastly, Doc, um, Prof, I mean, today marks World Vet Day. What activities do people normally participate in on a day like this in order to celebrate? For us today, the theme is actually on, on well-being on mental well-being and, and professional well-being because it is a problem in the profession worldwide and we do want to create awareness of that so for veterinarians but also for the general public to be aware of, of um, challenges that we have in the veterinary profession with regards to mental well-being and that's something that the profession is working on internationally to try and address and to try and improve the, um, the livelihood of veterinarians across the globe. So if we want to celebrate anything today, we should celebrate mental well-being as a profession, as a veterinary profession. And this is what's happening across the globe today in terms of uh, the World Veterinary Day. Thank you so much for your time, Prof. That's Prof. Ditmar Holm, who is the Deputy Dean for Teaching and Learning for the Faculty of Veterinary Sciences at the University of Pretoria, giving us his account of what should be done in order for us to bring up those numbers of getting more doctors who will be taking care of our animals and also ensuring that we celebrate this day, particularly in making sure that we take care of their mental illness. Thank you so much, Doc. Uh,